everyone, this is Jamie, and I'm Sharon, and we are Sharon at Sea. What's up, everybody? Hey, uh, we're about a week away from an amazing eight-day cruise on the Carnival Horizon. Sharon and I are sitting around talking today about all the last-minute things that we need to make sure that we have on lock and load uh, before we head on to the ship to make sure we have an amazing, smooth cruise. And we're going to share some of those things with you guys next. All right, so if you guys are anything like us, you booked your cruise months and months ago, you've been getting excited, making your plans, doing some research, getting everything lined up, and then boom, you're a week away from getting on the cruise. You're like, oh my God, I'm a little overwhelmed right now. There's a lot of things coming at me pretty quickly, and I'm not sure if I'm ready to go. Well, we were talking today, here's about 10 things that you need to make sure you have locked and loaded uh, for when you get on that cruise ship and to go have an amazing, smooth cruise experience. All right, so the first thing we're gonna talk about is packing. That's very important that you have everything you need when you get on that ship. So a lot of you have probably, or hopefully, have maybe set a few things out, maybe a few weeks, a few months ahead of time, kind of somewhat prepared. Although this last week is very crucial that you have all your things laid out, lined up, ready to go in that suitcase. So a few things we do is we um, look online, kind of check the weather in the ports we're going to be going to, make sure that we're bringing um, proper clothing for the, you know, the, the weather at mm -hmm. the time. Um, another thing is we plan on whatever excursions we're going to be taking, what kind of clothing we need for that. If we're going to be taking an ATV excursion, you know, we might need or something where we're going to need our tennis shoes versus flip flops, those kind of things. Just make sure you have all the proper clothing and, and shoes that you're going to need for your excursions. Um, so basically we get all those together. You want to have them all together, maybe put in your packing cubes if you use packing cubes and have them all ready to go so that maybe a couple days before you can get them all put in the luggage, close the luggage up and be ready to go. Another thing is kind of plan whether you're going to be taking um, check luggage and a carry-on or just carry-on only and, and kind of go from there and plan accordingly to what type of luggage you're going to be bringing on with you as well. All right, now the next thing that you need to uh, worry about making sure that you have on lock and load are plans for excursions. Now you're going to be going to see a lot of fun ports. You want to make sure that all the things you have planned go nice and smooth for you. Um, you may have booked some excursions through the cruise ship and those ones are pretty easy to maneuver. You've already booked them. They're going to keep you in line. They're going to tell you where to go, where to meet, probably get your tickets to your cabin and such. And if you have any questions, you can always inquire once you get on the ship at the excursion desk. Now, if you booked excursions off of the ship, these are times when you really want to make sure that these reservations and plans are, are um, you know, written in stone. Contact the company ahead of time. Make sure you have a way to contact them once you get there, phone or email. Make sure you bring all your documents that you've printed out showing your reservations, any deposit you may have already paid. Know where you have to meet when you get there. Maybe talk a little bit about the time, as in the uh, local time versus the cruise ship time, and is there a difference that you want to be aware of? And make sure you go over all that stuff. That way you know when you get into port, if there's a delay or there's any issues, you know how to reach the people, how to make alternate arrangements, and um, that way you don't miss out on any money or amazing memories you can make on those excursions. So plan those excursions accordingly. All right, the next thing we're gonna talk about is something we call on the ship. And this is everything you're gonna to need to get on that ship, to board the ship, as well as everything you will need throughout the week on the ship. So to get on the ship, first thing, you're gonna need a couple things. Hopefully you've already completed your online check-in. Yeah. So you're <laughs> it's pretty important. Yeah, so you'll have all those printed documents that you will be bringing. So the main thing you're gonna need to get on that ship is you're gonna need your identification, whether it be your passport or whether you're traveling with a, a driver's license and a birth certificate, um, and also your boarding pass. So those are the cup, two things that are very important that you're gonna need to get on that ship. Another thing, as we're talking about passports and ID, I just wanna mention a little tip here is something we do is we take a picture of our passport, we then we email it to ourselves so we always have it in our email. So if something should happen and we don't have a, our passport on us, we do have a copy of it in our email that we can get to if ever need be. Another thing is once you're on the ship, you're going to need um, maybe we bring copies of all of the things we've purchased, whether it's the specialty dining we've purchased, a spa treatment, the drink package, maybe purchase water for our stateroom, any of those things, we bring our receipts with us 
so that we have them available in case there is some kind of issue that arises where we don't receive them. It's a lot easier to handle things when you have your receipt, you have documentation that you actually did purchase it. So those are a few things that we bring as far as we call on the ship that we like to have handy and ready to go and make sure all that stuff is in your carry-on as well. All right, the next couple of things that you need to be concerned with and that you need to have locked down uh, really have to do with travel. Now, if you live in a port city and you can drive to the port, congratulations and we are jealous of you because we don't get to do that often. Um, most folks have to fly in and quite often you're flying in the night before which means you have a hotel reservation as well. So you need to make sure of a couple things. You have all your plans to get to the airport. Are you parking your own car at the airport or do you have a ride? You're getting your flight. Um, you, do you have arrangements to make dinner while you're traveling, eat while you're traveling? Once you get to the port city, what are you doing from there? Do you have a ride to get to, uh, to your hotel or something of that nature? Then you also have to do that in reverse for the way back and think about that too. So making your travel arrangements to and from airports and such in the port city are things you pretty much have to have planned out. You may need to take taxi ride, Uber rides. You're going to need to uh, you know, make arrangements for that and have that stuff organized as well. And then besides that, you're going to want to make sure you have arrangements to get to the port the morning of the cruise. So maybe you're staying at a hotel where they have a shuttle. Well, that works out well, but what time does that shuttle run? How many people are probably going to be trying to get on that shuttle? What if you try to get on and it's already full and you got to wait for the next one 40 minutes later? A lot of factors involved there. And do you have a backup plan? Same time, once you get off the ship, what are you going to be doing? Getting a taxi? Do you have a flight ready? What time is your flight? Um, do you have time to tour the city before you go to the airport? Do you have to get off the ship early Lots to get questions. to the airport? <laughs> so there's a lot of factors involved as far as travel to and from the port city and then travel locally once you get there. So make sure you give that a lot of thought and uh, have a game plan for that so there's no surprises and you don't get caught uh, stuck with you and your luggage on a curb somewhere with no ride. All right, another thing, let's talk about money. Sure, your cruise is paid off, but you're still gonna need a little bit of money for a few things you may wanna pick up around the ship, off the ship, or wherever. So you're gonna wanna go to the bank and get a little cash. Now, I will say I'm gonna link a video, maybe in the description below, maybe a card up above, um, to a video I made a couple months back. It was on, I call it my budget envelope stuffing um, video and that is where I kind of it's something we do where we put money in some envelopes we label them for our port days and it kind of keeps us on track with our spending for our budget while we're in port and it's it's a really good way to kind of stay on track and and keep track of what you're spending so you don't overspend and that you have enough for everything you want to do so now let's get back to the money. You're going to want to go to the bank and get a lot of small bills because you are going to need small bills if you're going off into port and also they come in very handy for tipping. Maybe you order room service, maybe the porters at the airport, porters at the cruise port that take your luggage, things like that. You're going to want to throw a couple dollars to them. So those are some reasons you're going to need some small bills. I would highly recommend, you know, maybe some 20s, also a lot of 10s, 5s, and 1s. 1s and 5s especially come in very handy. Also, when you're shopping in the ports, they don't always have a lot of change, so that's what, another reason it's good to have um, some small bills when you're shopping in the ports at these small vendors. Also, now let's talk about once you're getting on the ship as far as um, what is going to get paid for on your, um, like some cruise lines call it a sale and sign account. Um, other cruise lines have other names for it, but it is how you pay for anything you purchase on the ship. So this is, most people will link their credit card to that. Um, you can also do a cash account. So if you're gonna do a cash account, then you're gonna to wanna to go to guest services and put some cash on your account. So you're gonna to wanna to bring cash for that accordingly. You know, and that you can bring some larger bills if you like, it's easier to keep track of, but however you wanna do it. But bring some cash to put on your account. If you are going to link a credit card to your account, I would um, suggest doing a credit card versus a debit card. Sometimes the debit cards, they do put holds on them and there may still be a hold when, once you return home and it takes a couple days to get taken off of there. So if you may need some of those funds, then you may want to link a credit card instead because it doesn't, they don't put the same holds on the credit card as they do the debit card. So that's just a little tip. So anyways, make sure you go to the bank, get your cash, plan your finances accordingly for how you're going to be doing your spending on your cruise and you should be all set. All right, so Sharon mentioned uh, credit cards. Speaking of those credit cards, one thing you also want to do is make sure that you contact your bank 
to let them know that you're gonna be traveling because when they start seeing some uh, uh, bills coming from across the country and different uh, Caribbean islands and things, I don't know, they might have a tendency to lock that thing down on you a little bit. Um, take it from us, first-hand experience, a cruise we took on the Vista, uh, one of us, who he will remain nameless, um, may have forgotten to contact the bank in all the excitement of the cruise, and when they try to use the card at a machine in a hotel lobby, let's just say <laughs> she gone after that. So uh, we lost that card, and luckily we had a backup. Make sure that you contact your bank. Let them know when you're traveling. You can do it with a phone call. You could do it in person if you got free time on your hands, or just go online. And most uh, banking institutions have a way where you can go on, fill out some travel information. That way they know where you're going, where you might be staying for the night. You know, maybe you're gonna fly into one town, you're gonna drive to another to get the ship. Let them know all those details, and that way you don't get any surprises. And make sure you have a way to, that they can contact you in case there is an emergency or a fraud alert, so you can deal with it right away and take care of things before your card gets canceled, locked in, or something like that. So contact the bank, let them know what's up, whether it's your credit cards or your debit card, and that way you get no surprises. All right, now another thing is if you have pets, make sure you've made your arrangements for your oh, pet sitter. Lucy needs arrangements. I know. So whether you are taking your um, pets to a kennel to be watched, maybe you have a friend or family that you're gonna take them to their house, whether you have someone coming to your house, whatever the case is, make sure you've made those arrangements prior to and you kind of confirm them just a couple of days before because you never know. Someone may cancel, forget to tell you, and then you're left leaving for your cruise and you're wondering, what am I going to do with my pets? So make sure you confirm that a couple days before and you have a place for those little guys to go. Yeah, so, so it's something where you never think you might, but what if you forget all about that little pet till yeah. the morning of and you're like, oh my gosh. So yeah. great, great tip on that one, Sharon. Yeah, so make sure you have your pet sitters all lined up. All right, one more thing that you need to make sure that you have arrangements for is your mail. Now, depending on where you live, you have all kinds of different, you know, mailbox situations out there. Sometimes you might have a locked mailbox and maybe it's not so much you have to worry about. But if you're somewhere rural where you have one at the end of your driveway or something that's not secure, you're going to want to make sure you put a hold on that mail. You can go down to the post office and do it directly. You can just grab probably a postcard, fill it out and drop it off for them to hold the mail. Uh, some places you can probably do it online as well. And that way they'll hold it while you're gone and deliver everything all at once because you don't want a lot of your personal mail who knows what's going to be in there you know bills with your information stuff like that somebody knows you're out of town it's pretty easy to grab some mail out of your mailbox so make sure you're securing yourself protect yourself and put a hold on that mail you don't really think much about it but it could be pretty important while you're on vacation well Sharon we cover a lot of things is there anything else that people need yeah. to worry about a week out from their cruise basically you want to just go through and go over everything, make sure you have everything in order, whether it's a checklist you have, whether it's um, a list you actually hand write out, whether it's a list you do on the computer, on your phone, but make sure you have some type of little list to go through, check things off, make sure everything's in order. Another thing is make sure you purchase your sunscreen if you're going to a warm weather destination. Oh yes. And make sure you have all your medication that you need, prescription medication in particular, that's very important all ready to go to pack in your carry-on. It is very important you put that in your carry-on because sometimes your luggage doesn't get to your stateroom in a timely manner. It may not get there till later in the evening and if it's a medication that you maybe need, it's a special time you're supposed to take it, you need to have that on hand. So all your medication, like I said, especially prescription medication, make sure they get packed in your carry-on, very important. So other than that, just go through your list, make sure you have everything checked off, everything's ready to go and you're gonna have a great cruise hey i just thought of one more thing people can do before they go on their cruise what's that come back and see us again we sure appreciate you watching the video thanks for your time and checking things out i hope you enjoyed it hope you maybe learned a little something and if you want to see a little bit more of the content that we're making keep a lookout for sharing and see videos you can uh subscribe on youtube hit the like button because we always appreciate a thumbs up if there's a thumbs down, let us know why. Um, and uh, make sure you hit the bell so you can uh, get notified when we drop new videos. We're gonna have a lot of videos coming up from the horizon and a lot of cruises after that. And uh, if you're free on Monday nights, come check us out on our Monday Night Live show. We just chat a little bit about cruising, talk to a lot of regulars, come on in and say hi. Let us know where you saw things and if you saw us on this uh, video. And uh, one last thing that's really important, we'd like to make sure that you guys uh, uh, know from both of us, from everyone here at Sharon at Sea, Happy, Happy cruising. cruising.